Hi everyone, Julie here and thanks for joining me once again and also thanks for your support and everything else you know while I've been doing this quilt and just support in general. Um, before I go any further I want to say that I've actually closed my Patreon um, account, page, whatever. Um, the main reason for that is because most people with a Patreon page, you know, give extra content and videos early, things like that, to the Patreon supporters, and I just haven't had the time to do that, and I feel guilty for taking money for basically for nothing. So I've decided to close it. If anyone wants to donate to me, you can do so just through PayPal. That's probably the easiest way of doing it and the PayPal information is below this video. The Patreon link is still on all my previous videos but just ignore that. Um, but thank you so much for those that have supported over the years through Patreon. I, I do appreciate it because every little bit helps. At right this minute I'm just putting on my elastoplast or you know, band-aid onto my finger, two of them, to act as a thimble, which I'm sure you're all used to me doing by now. So just the one finger, yeah, and yes, my finger is bent. It's um, arthritis, but it doesn't hurt. So right this minute, as far as this quilt goes, I have finished finally all the blocks. If you saw my short the other day, it shows um, the final block finished and that's been sewn in and that is I don't know somewhere um, I think it's this one that one's already sewn in that was three fish so now what I have to do is join this big mass here is rows one to seven and on this side a rose eight, nine and ten and I have to join them up which is easier said than done. I'm starting on one edge and I'm going to work my way through and probably to about the halfway point which is roughly that final block that was number six in the row and then I'll swing the whole lot round and do the other bit. So for those of you who Missed it in last week's video, I only sort of mentioned it briefly. I had the MRI and got the results. They It doesn't show anything, which is good. It means that there's no brain tumour or anything like that that's, um, you know, causing my sight to be funny. And I, to be honest, I'll be glad to have this finished because it has been a strain on my eyes. And I know my sewing is not up to the same standard recently that the rest of the quilt is but it's good enough that when I hold a block up to the light I can see the gaps normally I do about 10 stitches on each side and I can see places where the stitches there is either gaps or they're not tight enough or something but once the quilt eventually gets quilted with the um, batting and the backing you're ne never going to see that light come through but I'll know it's there. So I will yeah, um, give sewing a break over the winter, or the Australian winter, because it's, free, it's freezing in this room this morning. But um, it's not as cold as it can get. So it's about six degrees out in that Celsius outside at the moment, which is still pretty cold for May. So we'll just, I'll get this quilt finished. Next week there'll be probably a sneak peek short and then another video showing the whole quilt. Normally I would do something like go down to my friend's house and lay it out on her like dining room floor, which can be swept up because all the bits that would come off this. But at the moment that's not an option because her father's in hospital. So I'll just lay it out here on the tables 
next week and you can see the whole thing done which I'm very glad to be that close to finishing it now so I'll have it finished in the next few days and it has been a long time coming um, other than the MRI and the results since the last monthly sew and chat I mean most of you or those that saw last week's video I did have the cat put down that was um, not a nice experience she's now buried with the other cats and dogs down at my friend's house in her backyard um, it's taken me it's been nearly three weeks it'll be three weeks on Tuesday since she was put down and it's taken me this long to you know, each time I go into you know from the lounge room where my desk is to the kitchen I sort of stop when I get to the kitchen because there's a there's a curtain to keep the heat in in the lounge room is I'm still used to waiting for her to come and join me because I know that she will same like if I get up in the middle of the night to have a pee and she's been asleep in the lounge room that tends to wake her up and then she'll come to bed so I finally stop waiting for her to join me when I go to the kitchen or further out you know to the laundry and the toilet but I still you know be it because I'm half asleep I still expect her to come and join me in bed in the middle of the night but that will pass it's very very strange for the first time in well over 30 years I actually don't have any pets I know people say I'll get another one or whatever I, I don't want another one I can't afford another one and I'm not a kitten person if I got another cat down the track it would only be an older rescue cat but I don't really have any plans to do that I'm on the waiting list for council housing which would only be a one bedroom flat and depending on the location you could be on a quite busy road and I always take cats into consideration when moving anywhere this road's incredibly quiet so I had no problems when I had three cats when I moved in here nearly six years ago but you know, I don't want any more pets the cost of cat food's gone through the roof I would spend roughly between $200 and $250 a fortnight on groceries and 80 of that would be for the cat, be it cat food, cat meat, kitty litter. You know, and that didn't include things like flea stuff and wormers or, you know, what are always horrendous vet bills. So no more pets for me I just can't afford it and I don't want it you know they do tie you down not that I have plans to go anywhere but if I was to go into hospital again at least my friend won't have to come and feed her and make sure she's all right or it if I was to get another one I mean my, I love cats we had six of them and I'd have 16 if I could but you also then have problems of some cats picking on other cats you know the black cat that my friend had that was put down just before Christmas she was 20 but three of the cats we call them the three bastards um, they just picked on her mercilessly and I just wouldn't put any cat through that again so that's why my friend had that one because the ones I ended up with were picking on her I mean I had four of them and you know, three of those four would sit there and just you know, intimidate her and stare at her and pounce on her and it just wasn't fair to to her and I, you know these people that have you know 10 cats I don't know how they manage with the you know infighting and such but that's my situation love cats not a kitten person same as I'm a dog person not a puppy person and I'm sure house training's got something to do with that but I'm not about to have any more pets I'm quite enjoying you know not having food bowls on the floor in the kitchen kitty litter trays in the laundry you know kitty litter walked through the house mainly by me not the not the cat but 
I'm quite happy to not have any pets for now. And also, if I got a kitten, it's quite possible it would outlive me, and that's not fair to any pet. So, that's the, that's the story of cats. Um, the next thing, I've got a list of things to mention. Um, I went and saw the surgeon the other day. I did have to drive because my friend was busy at the hospital with her father. Um, I'd had to go driving the previous week just down to the shops and back and I managed that. No hallucinations or trouble. Took a, a lot of concentration. Sorry. <coughs> but um, I managed. So on Tuesday I went down to see the surgeon for the post-operative appointment. He's pleased with my hip and has also agreed to do my other hip once he gave it a, saw the x-rays and tried to move it a certain way. So I filled in the paperwork to have that done. He said there's about an 18 month waiting list, which means I'm probably category three, whereas previously I was category two. But he says if it gets too bad to let him know and they'll you know, bump me up a category. And the reason I got the other one done so quickly at that hospital was because of all the messing about from the previous year, especially seeing as he got COVID on the day it was supposed to have originally had the surgery. So my right hip is now, I knew it wasn't brilliant, but in comparison to my other one before it was operated on, it was my good leg. But now it... Um, the operated on leg is absolutely fine, no problems there, and it's my other one that's causing difficulties, you know, all the same sorts of problems that I had with the first tip. I, um, I'm going to buy myself a new pair of crutches this time, because the stoppers, I know you can change the stoppers, but you know, they're not silly money, local shop sells them cheap enough. So I'll get a new pair of crutches, but I'm not going to get the surgeon to change the category. I've decided that when I need to put the raised toilet seat back on the toilet, which I don't have at the moment, or I don't have it on there at the moment, um, that's the time that I'll tell him that he needs to up the category because it's, you know, if I need the raised toilet seat, then it's got to that bad stage. So that's... Uh, story of my hips one's perfectly fine the other one's going to need to be replaced but at least i know this time what i'm up against and how relatively easy the recovery was i'm not saying it was pain free it certainly wasn't the day after surgery when they got me out of bed and the pain went from zero to out of 10 to like 15 but within less than a week from surgery i was moving about without the crutches, you know, walked around the supermarket, okay, with a trolley, but I was able to move from the car to the trolleys, go around the supermarket, leave the trolley, and then back to the car with my bag of shopping. So, and since then, I've, I've, I've hung the crutches back up in the laundry. You know, they were living next to the, outside the front door, but um, I now, you know, I'll get a new pair, but... You know, I can still move about, put my bin out, go to the letterbox. You know, I drove to the shop. Getting in the car is very painful with my right leg now pulling that in. Seeing as our car's a right-hand drive, not left. So I can get my left leg in, no problem. But my right leg doesn't like coming up over the, the sill of the car. Same as it doesn't like being lifted up into bed. But I knew all that and I expect it, so that's that's fine. So that's that. I also hung up one of my turquoise quilts, the one that the one that um with the diamonds that was one of my very first videos on how to quilt and quilting without a hoop. I've hung that up in the bedroom because the curtains that were in there previously were obviously it was a child's bedroom and they were like a jung jungle thing and it wasn't until I'd taken them down that I realised they were properly lined curtains and I've hung my quilt up and the light just shines through it all day long but 
I can, I can live with that. I could put the other curtains. I've got a spare curtain rod. I could put the other curtains back up, but then they'd show above the top of the curtain. So I'll just live. I don't go in the bedroom during the day anyhow. So I'll just live with the light coming through at night. It also means I can tell what the light outside's like when I wake up in the morning before even looking at the clock. So, sorry. <coughs> so, um, so I hung that up last week and it was nice to get that out of a tub and actually up on a, up on, or hanging up. So, just trying to move my chair because I'm a bit far out. So, um, the other day I decided I would put my big turquoise quilt on the bed. Now this quilt was my first half inch hexagon quilt. It's got, I think it's 14 and a half thousand hexagons, so it's slightly smaller than this underwater one. And it, it, um, weighs a ton. Weighs an absolute ton. But I always swore I would never put it on the bed till I had no cats. And so the cold weather has sort of hit this week. So I put it on the bed. It weighs a ton. It's too big for the bed. It's probably more of a king size bed size. But I didn't make it with a bed in mind. I made it with the design in mind. Same as this one. It'd probably be a king size bed size quilt if it was to go on a bed. And I know that that huge green one I did is you know it's even it's the biggest of the lot it's bigger than this one so i put it on the bed weighs a ton it's too big and it's too heavy i slept under it for one night and it was just too awkward and too uncomfortable so i've taken it off but i'll put up now some photos it'll there's three photos it'll take um five seconds each so you'll be able to see the three photos of the the two quilts together it may be the only time they're ever going to be together so here are those photos so i took it off the bed yesterday just have my normal we call them dunas. In England you call them duvets. I don't know what you call them in America. Um, had that on the bed last night with a... I call it the baby wool quilt. It's a quilt I knitted three long strips about, I don't know, a foot wide. Um, sewed them together, all different colours. It's four-ply baby wool. It took me ages to knit, but I had nothing else to do at the time. And I just used that on the bed... You know, because it, you know, if it got cat hair or whatever on it, it would, um, it can be thrown in the washing machine. So I just had that and my normal doona on the bed last night. And today I've put the big quilt back in its tub. The one hanging up on the wall, that stays in front of the windows. And because I'm not having everything in tubs, that defeats the purpose. But I've just put this blanket that I knitted onto the bed. Now this blanket is, I'll put up a picture, I'll put the picture up now. So this blanket is made knitted in pure wool, which means it's incredibly warm, but it is also unbelievably heavy. I used it a few nights last winter and it's not it's nowhere near as heavy as that quilt was and I only used it for a few nights because like the quilt I didn't want to have it on the bed with cats because um, cats and wool blankets not a good combination and not something that can easily be washed so I put that on the bed this morning so that'll be nice to get into bed with that tonight it is heavy but it's not squashy like a pancake heavy like the, the other quilt was so I've done that I did um, last night I had took down my 
mobile, the, the fish mobile that hangs above the bed. I took that down last night because it does hang above the bed, it's right above my head. And I enjoy looking at it when I wake up and I'm just lying in bed. But if you saw the video where I was making it, I just looped the wires over the balsa wood cross. Well, each time I go to shake out a sheet or a blanket or a whatever, they tend to move, if not actually just fling off. The other night I sort of shook my blanket onto the bed and ended up with fish falling down. So last night I got the brattle out and it's only balsa wood and poked some holes through and then cut the wires that were, they were hanging on, the fish, and fed the wire through the wooden cross, through the holes in the two bits of balsa wood. So now it, the fish can't fall off. Yeah, you know, they might swing around or get tangled, but they can't actually fall off. So that was something I'd been meaning to do for quite a while. So that's done. I've been doing a bit of knitting because I'm knitting another, just a throw rug. I'm going to knit another full size blanket I decided. But, um, and that'll just be in acrylic so not stupid expensive. That woolen one that's on the bed now was like $400 worth of wool. So um, I will get that um, get that knitted up at some point, there's no rush, been knitting it for years actually, so I'll get that done. My studies are continuing, The I'm waiting on the results for my main torts assignment, but my other, my ancient history assignment I did a few weeks ago, you had, it's on Alexander the Great, you had a choice of like six questions, I picked one about what happened after he died and I did some research and watched YouTube videos on it and when it came to write it I changed my mind and decided to pick another topic which was Alexander as a God and that's a topic we hadn't even discussed by that point let alone after his death and so I just dribbled on it's supposed to be 2,000 words I only did 1,200 I only did five references I thought well yeah, you know, it's not a law subject, it's, you know, I can always pick another, it's just like an elective. Got the assignment back and I got 60%, you could have knocked me over with a, you know, with a feather for, for getting that good a mark for, for what I thought was probably the worst assignment I've ever done. I mean, law assignments, you think you've done the best assignment you've ever done, you can end up with something like 25%, so... I was surprised by that and pleased because now all I've got left is the exam for that subject and it is a it's not a first year level subject it's what well, the for those humanities subjects they're like 100 level and then they jump to 300 whereas Lord has some electives or choices that are 200 level before you then jump to the 300 so it should have been, I think, marked a lot harder. I mean, obviously, a certain amount gets absorbed, I think, by osmosis or something into my brain because I certainly didn't expect that good a mark. The torts assignment I got an extension for because of I have a what's called a study plan or a study access plan or an access study plan, one of those sort of things, because of my site. So I get you know, ex extra time for assignments. I don't have to do it the supervised exam. I can do it like a, just sit at the computer and do it without having <coughs> what they call, um, you know, supervisors taking over your computer and checking everything. I mean, they're open book exams, so you can have access to your books during those exams, but not your computer, other than to answer the questions. But it also means <clears throat> you only get one five minute break, whereas it had already been agreed that I could have um, two 15 minute breaks. But it's even, you know, now that I've asked for it and they've approved it, it's even better to have it not supervised at all. So I can go and make a cuppa, do whatever. I mean, obviously, once you start the exam, you still have the 
allocated time which in my case will in still include the extra half an hour but you don't have that pressure of somebody watching you and if you go out of the screen without asking permission and you're only allowed the one break then they actually stop your exam at that point and anything you write afterwards doesn't count there's a lot of controversy about them they had a lot of problems I personally have never had any problems but I can understand people hating them I just thought given the option I'll do without um, I actually think I've run out of everything that's on my list talked about the mobile I'm waiting on my hot water system to be changed I noticed um, a couple of weeks ago that the hot water wasn't that hot in the shower like I had to put very very little cold and by the end of that day it was like lukewarm water coming out the hot tap so I contacted I don't think he's the owner I think he's the owner's son contacted him about it because he's the only contact I've got um, he said he'll get onto it get somebody out with a new system then he wanted to know he'll get the power because I said there's no off switch for the electricity because my usage is going through the roof no off switch for the hot water obviously there is for the electricity he said he would you know, upgrade the meter board I've never met this guy he's never even been to the house they bought it sight unseen um, and I'm still waiting on some minor repairs from that I requested you know December before last so I don't expect anything quick we've got a lot of rain forecast and happening at the moment so he said it can't be done it's an outside tank until um, there's no rain obviously being an electric system you don't want to be doing that in the rain but you know I'm still waiting for that that's now pretty much two weeks I think he's in Melbourne I'm out in the a country area about you know hour and three quarters or so from Melbourne so I don't know I'm guessing it'll get done when it gets done the actual tank is leaking from the top so looking at my electricity usage it's not good but it's not as bad as I first feared so hopefully that'll get done um, as I said I went out driving in this past week I mean the surgeon was he's only two towns away so it's only a you know, 10 minute drive 10 15 minutes but it um, my eyes were really tired especially my right eye and it's like when the optometrist did the test where you've got to press a button each time you see a green dot I mean halfway through the test I was ready to say can we just stop because my eyes too tired well it was like that after driving so I'm going back to only driving to the chemist which I did yesterday drive to the chemist every four weeks to get my prescriptions um, I've got an appointment when I need new prescriptions a phone appointment with the doctor to save driving down there I don't know how long my friend's going to be well, not incapacitated but unable to drive me places because of a father luckily I don't have any appointment surgery is not going to be for next year if you know at least so you know I don't need to be taken anywhere I'll get my groceries delivered I've got no need to go anywhere I don't need to go to the fabric shop or anything I've got some fabric that I will be ordering later this month online that's coming from a store in Australia called Spotlight which is like the big haberdashery craft homewares type store I've got that's where I get my wool from and my threads not not the, these threads but the normal sewing threads um, and I'm getting some bits and pieces for making some furniture for the dollhouse that I don't have but just miniature furniture which is what I'm going to spend some time doing once this is finished um, so I don't need to actually go out you know every couple of weeks I'll just start the car up and 
battery won't go flat. It's lasted since January, only being driven three times since January, and those three times have been in the last fortnight. So, yeah, it'll cope. You know, one fortnight I'll just start the engine and just leave it run for a minute, and the other fortnight I'll move it in the driveway so the guy cutting the grass can get through the gates to the backyard with his ride on. So I don't plan on driving any distance. The results from the MRI, the guy at the eye hospital said I need to have, oh, is it a CRT? Something scan. It's a retinal scan to show the health of my eye. Um, and they will contact me when that needs to be done, which means getting the train down to Melbourne. They haven't contacted me yet. So that will be drive to the station. or well, my friend will probably come with me, so she'll pick me up and we'll go to the station and catch the train down to Melbourne. Um, but I don't know when that's going to be. That could be six months away. But um, in the meantime, as I said, I'm sure not doing this fine sewing will give my eyes a nice rest. Um, I'll carry on doing this. Probably won't do much today. I'll do this, the rest of this thread, which isn't a huge amount. I've worked out it's probably going to take 10 or 11 lengths of thread to get all the way across this quilt, joining these two big sections together. It um, normally a long length of thread will join roughly 12 hexagons. So 10 or 11 lengths is 130 hexagons all the way across. So we'll get, um, I'll get this done in the next few days and then that's this quilt finished finally. I'm not getting the other one out of the tub and continuing on with it. I, um, I don't even know what I'm going to do with this one, let alone two more. You know, as I've as I found out, you know, these are too heavy. This will have polyester batting when it's finally done. The really heavy one had cotton batting, which I think is a bit heavier. But it, um, it had cotton because I knew I wanted it to go on the bed. I just didn't realise how heavy it was going to be. What I need is to have one of those things at the end of the bed that I can fold the quilt down onto or a bed end which my bed doesn't have that I can fold it up and, and lay it across that but for not only do I not have something for to go at the end of the bed I don't actually have space for anything there either and I won't put anything at the side of the bed because it happened once a couple of years ago and scared the hell out of me and nearly happened again several weeks ago is I actually fell out of bed now, if there's something towards the bottom of the bed, your feet are going to land on that, which is going to put your head down on the ground and your feet up in the air. And as there's a chest of drawers next to the bed, anyhow, you know, chances are I would end up quite injured if I put something, you know, at the side towards the bottom of the bed. It was bad enough having a plastic tub for the cat to use as a step, and I'm most relieved to have been able to move that out the way. So... I don't know what I'm going to do with this quilt. It's not the sort of quilt you could lay down as a rug like that big green one is, which may be the next one that I actually quilt rather than this one. Um, I don't know. It's too big to hang off a normal curtain rod. The one hanging in the bedroom is only 10,000 hexagons and it is, you know, just an inch off the floor. So we will see. I will carry on doing this for the next few days and like I said there'll be a video in a week's time showing this quilt finished. I've just laid out, I've got this trestle table and a small one that I can put at the end of it, lengthways it'll take the entire width, because 2.54 metres, which I don't know how many inches that is, but it's big. So we shall, or I shall, carry on with this, get it finished, take lots of photos, I'll do a short, a sneak peek short of, because doing them on the phone only gives you 15 seconds, 
sneak peek short of it finished and then next weekend there'll be the the proper video of it done showing basically showing all of it I'll just have to keep moving it to get it into the into the shot but showing all of it and then it'll get folded up and put away until well until whenever but I'm really glad to have finished it I'm really pleased that I managed to do it to design it all but that's it so that's basically it for this video I will carry on and I will see you in the next one thank you very much